Hey guys, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about OmniROM and right now it's only available for a select few devices, one of which is the Nexus 4, so I thought I'd take a look at this. Now this is a very very early build, so not that much has been added in the way of features or customization, and it does have a fair number of bugs, so take that into account. OmniROM itself is built from the ground up, it's based on AOSP 4.3 and what they're going to be doing is adding features and options based on what the community wants. So I guess this is going to be some sort of voting system which is actually pretty cool, but yeah let's go ahead and check this out. As always guys I will include the links in the description to this ROM so you can try it on your Nexus 4 if you do want to give it a go. You can see in the build number I'm using a build from a developer called Rish. There are a few different builds out there but this is the one I got to work the best so yeah let's go ahead and take a look. So guys, this video is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be a full ROM review like I normally do. It's still in its very early stages of development, so it's not really worth it. Now, in terms of the customization, yeah, it really doesn't have a whole lot right now. You can see you can change the battery style, have a notification count, or toggle the translucent status bar on the lock screen, but that is pretty much it. Nothing else is really different from stock Android. So yeah let's move on to some of the features that are implemented so one of the biggest ones has got to be samsung's multi-window now i know a lot of you guys have wanted this on a custom rom for a while and here it is so to split screen an app you jump into the recents tap and hold the app you want to split screen and press add to split screen view so i had the browser open previously so the bottom half is the browser app and it's a fully functional app the top half is google plus again a fully functional app so you're running both at the same time and you can use both now it is a little bit cramped so right now you can't resize a specific window to make one larger than the other Hopefully that will come in a later build, but you can see the concept does work quite well. Now for me, it makes more sense to use this on a messaging app. So I tested a fair few apps and it worked with pretty much all of them. You can see you can split screen WhatsApp, so you could have Google Plus open or the browser open, and you could have your WhatsApp to send a message to a friend. I also tried this in landscape and I had some issues with it. Now some people on the XDA thread have got this to work without a problem, but you could see I had some issues. It just wouldn't resize the app on the other part of the screen, so I couldn't split screen another app. So I was messing around with it and I also noticed another feature, you can press and hold the recents key and it will bring up your last app. So you can see I'm in the browser right now and if I press and hold you can see it automatically split screened WhatsApp for me. So that's pretty awesome, that was the last app I ran so whichever the last app you run would split screen it with what you have and you can see you can press and hold it and it closes out the app. I thought I'd also give it a go with a live feed from the camera. So the bottom half is the browser and the top half is the camera and you can see it does work really well. You can take pictures with the camera, you can swipe over to the gallery, check out other images and then you can go back to your browser, load up a web page, check out another picture, go back to the live feed and you can see it all does work. So it's working pretty well for an early build and it definitely gives you something new in terms of multitasking on Android. So lastly I wanted to see if you could run a game in split screen mode. So I've got the browser open, I'm trying to split screen Temple Run here and we're going to see if it works. So the browser is here and there we go, you can see Temple Run has come in on the top half of the screen. Now the browser works at the bottom as you can see, you can scroll around like you normally could. And if we click resume at the top, yep, you can see Temple Run is working as well and I've loaded a page on the bottom. So while I'm playing Temple Run, I've loaded a page on the browser, you can see the gyroscope is working. I didn't even notice any lag as well, so the game seems to run pretty well. And yeah, the browser loaded up the page as well at the same time. So you can quickly check up on some news while playing Temple Run. I wouldn't suggest it because you will die as you'll probably see in a minute. I'm sure I'll die straight away as I'm reading this message. And yeah, I completely just forgot about Temple Run and I died. But nonetheless, it does work. So the potential here is pretty awesome. So we've got one more feature to show off and it's called flippable toggles and you can see we're in the quick settings here and you can flip some of the toggles over you can see to get some more options. So this is the Bluetooth toggle and if we turn it on you can flip it round and you can easily quickly make it discoverable or not discoverable and I really like this I think it should be implemented in loads more ROMs. Now not all the toggles are flippable you can see most of them actually aren't and again this isn't customizable on this ROM just yet. Wi-Fi is, you can see you can flip over, you get your detailed information about your Wi-Fi like your IP address and you can click tethering and it'll open up the tethering section in the settings. So there you go guys, that's pretty much the state of OmniROM right now and you can see it's going to have a bright future, it has a lot of potential. Saying that though, I wouldn't suggest using this as your daily driver right now, I think it has a fair number of bugs and really doesn't have much in the way of customization as you've seen. So let me know what you guys think and yeah, peace out.